To the ninth or nineteenth? Ninth verse. Ninth. Okay, thank you. Chapter four, verse one through nine. And it reads, And Adam knew his wife, Eve. And she conceived in bed pain and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bear his his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought forth the firstlings of, the, of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? And why art thou wroth? And why is the countenance fallen? If thou dost well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou dost not well, sin lies at the door, and unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shalt rule over him. And Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel and his brother and slew him. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel, thy brother? And he said, I know not, am I my brother's keeper? Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we, we ask of you, Lord God, to... Uh, Open up our hearts and our minds and our souls and give us wisdom and guidance in the teachings that you have given us, Lord God. We ask of you, Lord God, to have an understanding of, of what uh, your word says, Lord God. Let us look deeper than what the surface says and allow your Holy Spirit to motivate us, to meditate on what you have for us, to be ministered to, and to understand that in our own understanding that we have to count on you to get a better understanding. As I play the background, I ask for you to bring forth your Holy Spirit to minister each and every one of us here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, this story, I must have read this story so many times. And it becomes so traditional that when you start reading it, you skim through the meat of the story and not really uh, delve into it, into what God is actually saying. And what I'm trying to understand in this whole situation is that we've come to the conclusion that there's good and there's evil. We can even come to the conclusion in our traditional uh, sense of what the story is about, we can say that Abel's good and Cain is evil, or Cain is bad. But we never really delve on the whole story. And sometimes the Bible won't give you the whole story. Sometimes you have to sit back and look at it, and, and not so much as just come to the conclusion in your own understanding, but the what if. And I'm not trying to trying to change the story, but I want you to think outside the box. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. So, in this story, you have these two brothers, and uh, the older one being Cain, the younger one being Abel. And one of the things about this is that they have this way of giving an offer. Now, when I look at it, is that who taught them how to do this offering? 
I would assume that it would be their father showing them how oh. to give mm -hmm. an offering. One gave an offering of a lamb or livestock. The other one gave fruit or what was tilled from his from from the ground. And when you look at the scripture, it talks about how Abel was a sheep her and Cain killed the ground. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to know, you're not. So when they come to give their offering, you're going to give what you have. True. So Abel gave what he had, mm -hmm. but he gave the best of. He gave the first of his best. Here we have Cain. He don't have a, a sheep. He don't have livestock. So he gave what he had. Whether he gave rotten fruit, whether he gave fruit that was, wasn't right, whether he gave whatever was on the ground and said, let me just gather this up to give what I can or to give what I feel is in the best interest of, of uh, what's supposed to be done. So my father taught me how to give, and so this is what I'm giving. So now, when it's time to give the offering, I'm not saying that he gave bad fruit or anything like that, but it's the way you give the offering, the way you give your sacrifice. You know, a, a lot of times people think that it's always a monetary thing, but when it comes to the first or the best stuff, it's the, most time, it's the time that you put in. Most of the time, it's the patience on how you give, or well, the thought process of what you give. <coughs> Most times, it's maybe uh, giving your time towards somebody else. That means that you're lacking the time for yourself, so you're being selfless. So now, you look at this whole thing as far as Abel giving his best, and then Cain giving what he could. There's so many different theories as far as, well, Abel gave uh, a living sacrifice, and thus, that is what God was looking forward to. But if Cain doesn't have a sheep or livestock to offer, then it can't be that. You he understand what I'm saying? He was going to sacrifice his own brother. Say again? He was going to sacrifice his own brother. I don't know about all that, but we're going to continue on the story. So here's the thing. Now you go and, and Cain's all upset. They said it as Thomas spell. That means he was like ticked off because of the fact that there was favor in this sacrifice and not his own. So the issue was, wasn't with his brother, the issue was with God. And sometimes when we take it upon ourselves to <coughs> manifest our anger, we'll go to our brother and, and not really deal with God. And then our anger gets overwhelmed and something happens. There's a fallout when the real issue is between me and God, or me and God. And God told them that. So they go up on, the, they go up to the field, and they have this conversation. Now, why did Cain kill Abel? That's the question I, that I'm trying to figure out. Has it something to do with the sheep? Maybe, this is just my opinion, maybe Cain said, listen, I don't have I don't have any livestock. I can give you some of my fruit and make an even exchange. Maybe Abel goes and says to himself, you know what, I'm good. You do you, I'm gonna do me. I don't need your fruit. My, I'm just gonna give the best that I can and get blessed. So now Abel or Cain is pretty ticked off. And again, I'm ad living. I'm not saying that this is concrete. I'm just letting you know that when it comes to when it comes to scripture, we don't we don't delve into why. We look at the what happens, and then that's all we we take we take it for granted that that's the, that's the end of the story. But that I, I just think that there's more to the story than what the Bible is actually saying. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm what I'm getting at is that you look at Cain's occupation and what he can give. You look at Abel's occupation and what he can offer. And then you look at Cain and Helen. Even though Cain is older, Cain 
was the same thing with Adam. Adam kept came out to kill with God, or how to kill the ground. So, but somebody had to take care of the livestock. So, not to say that one's greater than the other, but what I'm saying is now, if you can't produce what God is actually asking, then you have to bond. You have to go to your brother and see what you can exchange. Amen? So, with that being said, we're going to learn how to bake a cake. Okay. We're going to learn how to bake a cake. So, I'm going to give this sister shout. <laughs> Yeah. 
But here's the thing. So she goes down, so you you make your cake. The best way to say God is holy. I know, but let me get to where I'm let me get to where I'm going. So you make your cake the best way you can with with fear of him. So she makes her cake. At the party, she goes to her party, she drops her cake off, she can stand an ovation. Now, with, with the little bit of you got, the little bit of you got, you guys come together, are you going to get a standing ovation? I really don't care about that. Yeah, I'm not asking you. <laughs> yes or no? Are you, all right, are you going to get a standing ovation? Okay, so, this is the way people are. Because of the fact they looked at you and your cake, and you got to stand an ovation, and I'm not saying you per se, yeah, no. but because of the fact that, let's say he didn't want to give you anything. Let's say he goes, I'm straight. I'm just not going to the store. Maybe you don't have enough money to go to the store and get what you need to do. So you got to do the best way you can. Maybe you, you, uh, you, uh, you, you subtract. I mean, there's only two, I mean, there's only two options. If you ain't got no money, you still have to give God, you know what I'm saying, cake and cane. Cane has no other choice. Right, but here's my, my friend, my friend. Right, let me get to where I'm going. I got you. I got you. Let me let me get to my point. It's kind of like a, a, a story that I'm getting to. You're just you're adding to my story. I just, that's all I want to do. So basically, what I'm getting at is because she got to stand ovation, and you guys want to get a stand ovation, and people are complaining about your cake because your cake's bitter, your cake's nasty, your cake's uneven, your cake is not even complete. It's falling off. So now you got anger issues with her. You know what I mean? And sometimes the fact of because she didn't share, she thinks she's straight. But next, but eventually she's gonna need. She that's all she got. Now how much milk you got? I don't know. You got a gallon. And how much you got? Uh, how much milk you got? You only got a cup. So after that party, they say, hey, Sister Sharon, I want you to come back again. Make that same cake. That's it, Sister Sledge. Now you're going to meet him. That's it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because you only got enough to make one cake, but you can't do the cake that day. You see what I'm saying? So what, what happens is we get in our prayer life, in our giving life, and when we we uh, deal with each other, we're lackadaisical, we're lazy, we don't we think about ourselves, we're selfish, and these are the ingredients that we come to the table with and not even think about other people. Yeah. These are the ingredients. So when if you got the pastor that for 37 years she's been dealing with this city, dealing with the homeless, I know that her ingredients are up the pot. She got more than enough. She might be running on empty, but she always got more than enough. But then you have other people that will try to manipulate the situation and make themselves look good by borrowing her and not giving back. You see what I'm saying? You'll have those, those are the issues with other ministers or other ministries that will take and take and take and never give back. You know what I mean? So I, here's another thing I want you to look at too. That yeah. I, um, Abel, Abel and Cain reminds me of the story that Jesus told in Luke. And he had this tax collector and he had a Pharisee, a religious gentleman. And the Pharisee, and they gave, or they offered up their prayers. The Pharisee, when he went to go talk or give a prayer, all he did was say, thank you, God, for blessing me and not making me like this tax collector, not making me an adulterer, not making me a, like a hip or a The tax collector said, you know what, God, I just want to ask for forgiveness for the being a sinner that I am. So when in God's eyes, God doesn't look at the, 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 uh, the Pharisee. He looks at the tax guy because he was sincere. So when we give our offering, and I'm not talking about monetary, I'm talking about everything that we that God has given us. When we give back, when we give back to the people in, in the streets, when we give back to the people that live right next door that are that, that are hurt, when we give back to our schools, when we give back to the, the community that we live from, 
that we live in, that's what our sacrifices are really looked upon. That's what God looks at. You know, we get to the point where we think that we're straight, you know, because it ain't about our righteousness in and of itself. It's about how we treat other people in our righteousness. Our righteousness should be continuous. It's not so much as like, let me just, like, because a lot of people will count on their own righteousness and they'll count on their own work. And if you don't have what it takes to, uh, to offer up, in other words, there's like, Deacon Anthony might be out of patience, like as he talked uh, about it earlier this, after this morning. So, but by him confessing it, he's letting you know to pray for him so he can work on it, so God can fill him with that patience. But if you're too tired and you're too, too selfish enough not to pray for Deacon Anthony on his patience, then what does what your prayer life look like? What is your sacrifice look like? How are you become a, becoming a living sacrifice when all it becomes is lip service? So when it comes to being called the church, there's a lot of services that come for it. You don't go to the hospital and they don't offer you the services that, they, that you expect. Oh, I want you to sit right here, fill out this form, and let me know what your issues are. They never come and check on you. They never check your blood pressure. They never check to see uh, what your temperature is. They never do any of that. They just fill in. All these people fill in, sit down, have a seat. Yeah, you're out of the cold, but that doesn't mean that you're not sick. If they don't supply you with the services, then why are they called a the hospital? So it's just as much as us. If we're being called the church and we don't supply the services of being the church, then why, what's the point of being uh, the, the church? What is the point of being called in this ministry of church without the services that come with it? You know, everybody wants benefit, but nobody wants to be, nobody wants to give out the benefit. Everybody wants to collect, but nobody wants to do a lot. You know, and it, it just amazes me how Christ became a servant. You know, God in the flesh became a servant. He didn't come here to be all pimped out. You know, and that's what exactly what happened. You know what I'm saying? So basically what I'm getting at is as a person, you know, you become a living sacrifice for all of us. And that and, and, and you should be expected to be treated from other people the same way that, that, that you would be doped out. And that's the problem that we have in, in church. I can talk about people in the world all day, but they already know. They already know where they stand. And the church should know where they stand. But sometimes you have to reel them back in and let them know that the standards of Christ is totally different than the world. True. All these churches, they have different fellowships. You know what I'm saying? Different regulations. Nowadays, you got Catholics, you got different groups of regulations on how their religion is supposed to be. You got mm -hmm. your Baptists, you got your holy number one headquarters, you got you got uh, Jehovah Witnesses. Right. You know what I'm saying? And here's the thing, when you have Christian fellowships, right, you got to look at these labels when it comes to these churches, right, because these churches have different agendas, you feel what I'm saying, mm -hmm. they, they, they go to a, 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 they are basically, a church is a non-profit organization, you feel what I'm saying, so, so which means is that the pastor, the, the deacon, the 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 the, 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 the ushers and stuff, uh -huh. they all pay themselves. Okay, so here's my here's my question to you. You serve God or you serve me? I serve God. Okay. I don't worry about a Baptist, Pentecostal, Catholic, I don't worry about when I, when I talk about church, I'm talking about people that are actually doing the work. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about people that actually go up their sleeve and actually do the work. I'm talking about other churches well, that come well, here and go in the back and roll up their sleeve and do the work. So uh, all those titles and, and uh, self-appointed positions, I don't, that's either here or there. That's what the world has to deal with. But in, in the, at the end of the day, God knows what's right and what's wrong. Who's doing what and who's not doing what. Amen. It's all about Christ's life, not church life. Christ like all the day long, but it, you can't play Christ. You either become like Christ or you don't become like Christ. And
And that's how you know the difference, that in the, in what we call a discernment. So, but I definitely feel what you're saying, exactly 100%. You're absolutely right. But there's a difference between church going and actually becoming uh, Christ-like, being of the church, his, his church. Not the church, but his church. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen, amen. Um, your input. I appreciate the, the, the thing that, uh, your participation. You know, I appreciate the, uh, the help of other churches coming here and giving their 100%. You know, it's not about, it's not about what, what, how we go about doing it. It's how we go about, you know, living for God. You know, so with that being said, I just want to say thank God. Amen. 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 Let us pray.